Welcome back. Those August primaries are just around the corner, and ABC 17 News will have candidates running in the 4th Congressional District here in studio ahead of next month's election. Tonight, we have Mark Alford, who is a Republican candidate in the 4th District, joining us in studio. Lucas, Mark, good to see you, man. Thank you very much for your time. Why don't you just start off, I, what I should people know about you? Well, yeah. I am a recovering reporter. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a politician, and I'm going out in the fourth district telling the stories of the people of rural Missouri, really, to be the strongest, loudest voice I can be for them. Not just in Washington, but in the national media, where they've been really underserved for a long time, Lucas. The loudest voices out of Missouri have come from St. Louis and Kansas City, two Democrat congressional districts. And I'm here to tell you right now, there are eight districts in Missouri. Six strong Republican districts, those are the true voices of Missouri, and those are the voices I'm going to represent in Washington. And by the way, it's good to be back on a news set. I have not been on a news set in nine months. So. Well, welcome. <laughs> thank I hope you. this doesn't trigger anything that you start shoving me off the <laughs> no, desk and start anchoring. You do a great that. job. Well, thank you for yeah. saying that. I do want to ask you about the district itself. Sure. What do you think about this? I mean, we've seen a lot of you know redrawing maps throughout right. this year to finally settle on this. What finally, do you think of yes. this district that... Do you think suburban Kansas City, which is you know part of this district, really has much in common with northern Boone County and the western side here? I mean, what do you think of the... I tell the you the way they districts? divided it up, and it took the Senate long enough to do this. I was waiting for more than a year for them to come up with a map, and everyone else in this race was as well, so we could know exactly where we needed to be, who we needed to talk to, and who we needed to tell their stories. Everything in eastern Jackson County, east of Seven Highway there... Mm -hmm. uh, which is a pretty large portion of Jackson County, is now in the 4th Congressional District. It also moves Lafayette County and Saline County, just above I-70, into the 4th Congressional District. Now get this, we have 95,000 farms in the state of Missouri. Did you know that? It's a lot of soybeans and corn that not just feed Missouri, not just feed the nation, but feed the world. A lot of those farms are in these communities, those two counties, Lafayette, Eastern Jack, and Saline, but they were represented by Emanuel Cleaver out of the 5th Congressional sure. District. And so when you have urban concerns, like May, uh, Mayor Cleaver, he used to be mayor, sure. uh, Con Congressman Cleaver has, it's hard to get adequate representation. They felt for the longest time that they were underserved and undervalued. And when it came down that they were going to be back in the 4th Congressional District where they belong, it was like a party. And they were so exciting and welcoming to have someone like myself who's going to be that strong voice for them. I want to ask you about some of the issues you have on your sure. website. One of the first ones there, election integrity. Yes. Uh, under that, you mentioned that you want some sort of investigation into how the 2020 election yes. went. I, I bring that up. We had Taylor Burks, former Boone County clerk right. here, saying we need to move on from the 2020 election, how it happened, in talking about election integrity. What? Why do you want to go back to that? What specifically, uh, what, what specifically sure. do you want to look in there? Fair question. Lucas, you know, when you drive a car, the rear view mirror is a lot smaller than the windshield because we need to look where we're going is more important than where we've been. However, when something such magnitude that we had of the 2020 election happens, we've got to fully investigate. And until we do, until we find out exactly when on, I don't know if you've seen 2,000 mules we showed at our, our headquarters. There are so many discrepancies and so many questions that have just been glossed over. I carry around with me a copy of my dad's constitution that he gave me before he died. It's underlined like a King James Bible. And in it, it talks about how elections are to be handled. Four states, four states in our nation went around the constitution to establish their own rules for voting in 2020 based on what I believe is a man-made virus and this emergency that came about. And they were able to really, I think, in a lot of ways, overturn the will of the people. But, I mean, with 2,000 mules, a lot of the issues there I mean a lot of their evidence is on geo tracking and things like that and there's been I mean look there's been several fact checks out there as well on that doubting even the evidence that truth the vote put out with with that are you just not satisfied with the, I think if a tenth, other investigations I think if done on this election, a tenth of it is true in 2000 mules that we are in trouble as a nation there was so much doubt cast and so many answers that still need to be questioned until we get uh, and we will take back the House, mm -hmm. make it clear, this November. We're taking back the House, and I think we're going to take back the Senate. And when we do those investigations, are going to begin. We're going to investigate the 2020 election. Of course, Missouri has already changed its voting laws, which is great. 
I think we need to get back to paper ballots. I'm so mm -hmm. happy that we have the voter ID law where you have to have a, a photo voter sure. ID yeah. to be able to vote. So we only make sure that people who are qualified to vote, who should legally be voting in the state of Missouri, are casting their ballots. I want everyone to vote. Even if you're not voting me, I want everyone to vote and have their say, but we've got to do it legally. Mark Alfred, as a veteran of the news, yes. I'm sure you know our constraints on time as well. There's so much I wish I could talk to you more about. Um, and I'll come I, back tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate your Thank time, you. sir. Thank you very Thank you much. So much. Absolutely. It. Thank you. Now, be sure to keep watching ABC 17 at 6.30 as we finish out this week with one more candidate running in the 4th District. Tomorrow, for our final interview this week, we'll have Kalina Bruce to talk about her campaign.